call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Harleston City Commission uh, via Zoom uh, to order and being live streamed and call upon uh, Commissioner Uribe to lead us in an invocation. Okay. <clears throat> uh, dear Lord, as we, gather, as we gather together, we praise you for this day and for your purpose for it. Reset our agendas as we sit in your presence, for you assure us that where two or more gather in your name, we are here. Recalibrate our intentions and refocus our hearts. You will, for, for our lives, does not always reflect our plans. Change them to reflect your will. Help us to understand that we do not need full clarity to walk into the unique purpose uh, you and laid in our lives. Only you know what lies ahead. You are our good father just and righteous through our circumstances. Though our circumstances will be unfair from time to time in this life, you always are unwavering protector and shield. Keep the words of King David fresh in our minds and renew our hearts to the tune of your truth. I lay down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Let your peace rain down on us today as we seek you more than anything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our city commission meeting tonight. I'm sorry that we are uh, back to a Zoom meeting, but as we all know, uh, conditions with regard to the pandemic uh, have, have necessitated us to uh, really emphasize uh, our social distancing and physical distancing, uh, the need uh, to continue to wear face masks when out in public, because that protects others not just ourselves, but it does help help ourselves a little bit. Uh, the, the need to continue to uh, wash our hands, try not to touch our faces, and uh, and sanitize areas as much as we can. Uh, very important right now for all of us uh, to continue to use these practices, uh, even as we've had to pull back on uh, some of the reopening of our businesses, uh, but in order to keep us uh, at least at status quo, uh, we're really all going to have to do our part. I want to thank everybody for doing their part. I particularly want to thank uh, those healthcare workers who are extremely burdened right now, and uh, we should all uh, give thanks to them, uh, also to our first responders, our city staff. Uh, thank you to all of you who are working so hard uh, to keep our city running and, and to keep our city safe. Uh, so thank, thank you uh, to all of you, and we will get uh, through all of this. So tonight uh, we have some uh, citizen communication. I think we have 16 uh, written uh, comments, and uh, Amanda will read those names and the, and the comments. Uh, and then we have three uh, folks that want to be called, so we'll go ahead and call them. Uh, dur for, during this uh, citizen communication and input. So Amanda, you can go ahead and proceed with that. Unmute myself. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mayor? I can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, Mayor, so we have 19 that submitted a form, and I'm going to call them the, um, the names of those people, and then I will call those that um, wanted to be called. So the first one is Richard Horney, James Barbie, Andrea Holtenberger, Maria Barrera, Irene Leos, Maria Martinez, Carlos Ruiz, Brenda Adi Arianda, Arianda um, Michael Hendricks, Victoria Garza, Deborah Warner, Brianna Bella Garcia, Sue Griffins, Tanya Venga, Laura Bus Bussy, Christy Tovar, Lori Jean, 
Juan Garcia, Jordan, Flanjo, Flano. Mayor, all of these people, um, with the exception of one, uh, do not want the recycling center closed. We have a comment from Mr. Michael Hendrick, and it reads like this, Mayor. Give thanks to the mayor, commissioner, city manager, and staff for all the work they are doing during this difficult time. So with your permission, Mayor, I will go ahead and call the first person, and that would be Christy Tobai. All right, thank you. Commissioners and Miss Elizondo. Hi, how are you, Christy? You I'm have, fine, thank you. You have two minutes, Christy. Um, as it gets closer to two minutes, I will go ahead and let you know that your two minutes are up. Okay, thank you so much. Can you hear them? Can you hear her? Okay, so um, you've had a lot of citizen comment on the recycling center. The recycling center, not just recycling, is important to many. And choosing to push forward now when social distancing is insulating you from our concerns is inappropriate. In my opinion, you need to table the vote tonight until such time as you're able to truly hear from the people of Harlingen. I also object to the short time frame we've been given to respond to the recycling center's troubles. I haven't been able to find any indication of an effort to inform us that the center was struggling beyond the workshop held just two weeks ago. I really question why wasn't there community outreach long before we got to the point of closure. From where I'm sitting, the push to close the center looks premeditated and like something that has been in the works for a long time. To me, that's just one more reason why the vote tonight should be tabled. If the vote does proceed, though, the recycling center must be funded, commissioners. It's not enough to continue recycling in some abbreviated fashion, like with the trailers of option two. The city has the sanitation funding to not only continue operating the recycling center, but to modernize it as well. The $781,000 that's slated to be moved from the sanitation fund to the general fund should be used for sanitation related expenses like the recycling center, not general fund budget items. I would add the budget you're up. Okay. I was at the budget workshop last week. I know good things come from the general fund, but ultimately we have to stop doing that. Um, and none of the four options presented for the recycling center are adequate. Uh, the center needs to be funded, modernized, and reopened, and there's money in the sanitation fund to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Good night. Thank, good you. thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tomar. Okay, go to, Mayor. Go to the next. Go to the next uh, Individual. Juan Garcia, I'm going to call Juan Garcia, Mayor. Let's see. Hello. Hello, Mr. Garcia. This is Amanda with the city of Harlingen, and you're on yeah. to speak on re uh, Recycling Center. I'm going to give you two minutes, yeah. and as it gets closer to two minutes, I will let you know. You may start now. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, uh, commissioners and mayor. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, just copy and paste Miss uh, Christy Tavares' comment, uh, and I would like to thank her for uh, leading the effort um, on the recycling. I wish we had more leaders in the, that, that would step up in the city like that. Um, Governor Abbott deemed recycling as an essential service at the onset of the pandemic. The Recycling Partnership issued a statement that the United States recycling system is an essential service with proper health and safety measures in place. The city of McAllen has a successful recycling program. They are part of the state of Texas Alliance for Recycling, also known as STAR, S-T-A-R, which is a leading group and advocacy for recycling in the state of Texas. Why isn't the city of Harlingen part of that alliance? Why do we not have blue trash bins 
at every single residence in Harlingen. If Harlingen wants to lead, like we say we do, we first have to catch up. Senate Bill 649, which was just recently passed last year, is a beacon of hope, which is set to provide infrastructure for recycling. And I hope that everybody there is in tune with that Senate Bill 649. Let's prepare for that. And let's, uh, let's work simultaneously so we can make sure that we get the, the right thing done here with recycling. Thank you all very much. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. We Thank have you, one Mr. more. We have one more mayor. Um, Ms. Tanya Vera. Hello, Ms. Vega. This is Amanda Lisondo with the city of Harlingen. Can you follow? Yes, okay. Um, you're on as far as to talk to the city commission about your public comments and on the recycling center. You have okay. two minutes. And as it gets close to two minutes, I will interrupt to just to let you know that your two minutes are coming up. You may start now. Okay. You may start, ma'am. Okay. Um, well, basically, my comment was that I feel that we have um, a multi-million dollar convention center sitting here in Harlingen that's not being used and it's not going to be used anytime soon due to the pandemic. Right now, we need to offer services in the city that are going to be used um, that benefit the community. And the recycling center is one of those services it is important um it should be funded and from what i understand there is enough funds to fund it um i've also seen in the past where the the animal shelter was assisted by the city financially in order to keep it open so I feel that the recycling center should be no different. It should, if, the, if it's in trouble, then the city should step in and help keep it open. Um, it is an essential service and it is important to the community. Um, it, it, it just, it's needed here in Harlingen and uh, many people want to keep it. Um, I, I just hope that the commissioners will listen to the citizens and do what's best for the community. Thank you, Mrs. Um, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Vera. Right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, you're welcome, ma'am. You have a good day. You too, ma'am. Bye-bye. All right, I believe that concludes our public comment. Is that right, Amanda? Okay. Yes, ma'am, yes. All right, no one else signed up or sent in anything, right? No, no. Okay, and then we'll go on to the item one, which is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 20th, 2020, and the regular meeting of June 3rd, 2020. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries, the minutes are approved. The next item is the consent agenda items 2A through E. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. Move, so moved, Mayor. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. Those opposed, like sign. All right, motion carries. I'm gonna pass the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem Mesmar and I'm going to abstain from participation in item three. Thank you, Mayor. Is there any, anyone else? The, Mayor, the, I, I, I've, I've muted my, my microphone and I've changed so you can't see any facial expressions from me, Mayor. I need to step out because I'm part of Amigos del Buy. Okay, so the analog uh, commissioner, uh, Mayor Pro Tem um, Mesmar, has to find the agenda on the computer here. <laughs> if you like, I can read the item for you, sir. Okay, uh, Amanda. Okay. Please read the item. 
Okay, one moment, sir. Okay, so item three reads as follows. Consideration and possible action to adopt a resolution to approve one year action plan budget for fiscal year 2020-2021, year 46 of the Community Development Grant Block, I mean, Grant CDBG program and fiscal year 2020-2021, year 26 of the Home Investment Partnership Program, HOME. Okay, uh, I muted because uh, I'm getting a junk call on the other phone here, uh, probably about my uh, car or insurance or whatever. Uh, so uh, Amanda read this. Who's, uh, who Ma are we directing this conversation to? Mayor Patan, we're going to ask Sandy to present the item. Um, good okay. evening, Mayor, um, commissioners, and staff. Um, today we come before you for approval of this resolution adopting the final budget for our 2020-2021 CDBG and home program allocations from HUD. Um, the total combined amount is $1,253,174. The proposed budget was presented before you along with a public hearing on June the 3rd at a regular commission meeting. Um, we held a second public hearing with our advisory board on June the 16th and we allowed for public comments from June the 6th through June the 16th. Um, the one year action plan budget is attached to the resolution as exhibit A, and I'm here to answer any questions if you have any. Um, staff recommends, recommends approval of the item. Mike, okay, I make the motion for an approval. Second. Okay, is there any, are there any questions or any discussion? We have a first and we have a second. So uh, all in favor of this signify by voting aye. Aye. Uh, opposed like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. I've unmuted my line and I am now going to item four which is consideration of possible action to dedicate an easement and right-of-way to AEP Texas Inc. and Delaware Corporation for the relocation of three-phase electrical service to Lancy Hill Park as part of the improvements for the destination park located at 1217 Fair Park Boulevard and authorize the city manager to execute any related documents. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, City Commission, this is Javier Mendez. Um, some reason I can't uh, unlock the video, but this um, um, easement is for the uh, destination park at Launcy Hill. And so what it is is to relocate power lines that um, traverse one of the, the improved parking lots that we're, we're proposing. And so we wanna, we need to relocate the service um, and take those power poles out of the parking lot. I mean, this is where the uh, the health clinic is at, right? Yes, sir. It's right behind the health clinic um, and over by the pool side. There I am. No. And, and this was anticipated as part of the project. So this is not something that surprises us. Um, it's something we anticipated was gonna be necessary. Hey, is there a motion to dedicate the easement and right of way to AEP? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Is there any All cost in favor? I'm sorry. Is there any cost to the city to move those lines? There, there will be a cost, uh, and we have some cost um, in in uh, in the budget for okay. the uh, relocation of those poles. So okay. we, we allow for some contingencies, knowing that uh, we're going to have some additional cost. Good. Okay. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item five is consideration of possible action to approve a license with the U.S. International Boundary and Water Commission to allow the construction, operation, and maintenance of the hike and bike trail extension along Arroyo, Colorado, and authorize the city manager to sign any related documents. Yes, Mayor T. Commission, this is a... Um 
much awaited um, agreement that we've, um, we've been working on with uh, the engineer um, and IBWC. Um, we've got all the clearances um, approved and we submitted them to IBWC. Um, their real estate division has prepared a, a, uh, an agreement. Our legal has reviewed it and, um, and I believe they, they've sent out a uh, revised uh, agreement to y'all from the original. So um, staff is recommending uh, approval of the agreement. And um, after this, we'll get started in, in uh, bidding out the project. Sure. Motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. I heard De La Rosa say second. All right. Uh, any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. All right. Let's certainly be good to get started with this project. Thank you. It's a great project. It's been a long time coming. Uh, so let's. Uh, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Look forward to it. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner. Item six is consideration possible action to approve a resolution to include the deputy finance director as a designated authorized representative for the city of Arlington's tech school investment accounts. Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners, and staff. Uh, tonight we're requesting approval of a resolution to modify the uh, authorized signers on our tech school accounts, <clears throat> uh, which are investment accounts. We currently have myself, the finance director, and uh, Gabe Gonzalez, the assistant city manager. We're asking to, to include uh, our deputy finance director, Kareem Abdullah. Um, once we, we sign this resolution, he will be added, and staff is uh, recommending approval. All right. Is there a motion to approve the no, uh, resolution? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item seven, consideration Thank possible you. action to approve an action plan for the recycling center operations. Carlos? You there, Carlos? I, I am here. Just bear with me a second. Let me, um, oops. Right, I'm going to, Mayor, if I may, I'm going to share the screen so you all uh, can see the uh, short PowerPoint uh, that I prepared. Uh, again, uh, Mayor, uh, Commissioners, good afternoon. Uh, this, again, is an item. It's a follow-up to the uh, June 16 uh, workshop that uh, was held. Uh, regarding the uh, recycling center. In a uh, set workshop, uh, the, uh, we discussed the market conditions of the recycling center, uh, the recycling industry in itself, uh, I should say, and also the various components introduced by COVID-19 in the processing or manual sorting of the recyclables. Uh, we noted that in, in such workshop that the operating costs are high, revenues are low. Uh, it's not a, a cost-effective uh, business model. The recycling participation rates are low, uh, to some extent uh, driven mostly by non-compliance, uh, 30 to 70 percent of the uh, materials uh, being dropped off, uh, not just here in Harlingen, but uh, valley-wide. The average is anywhere between 30 to 70 percent. Uh, and again, obviously, the uh, COVID-19 uh, introduces a different component as far as the uh, being able to uh, protect our employees as they uh, manually process uh, and sort these materials. Um, so um, again, the, uh, the um, average uh, operating costs over the last four years has been 400,000, uh, give or take. Uh, average on revenues uh, from the sale of the commodities, even though those are passed on to the uh, Cape Harlingen Beautiful, They've been averaging anywhere around sixty to seventy thousand or so per year. Uh, so, in the uh, workshop we had last uh, back in June 16, we introduced four options uh, for consideration. One again was to uh, reopen the, uh, the recycling center uh, in uh, somewhat of a, a business model as we had prior to COVID-19. Uh, but with introducing a recycling fee, option two was to uh, introduce a uh, self-recycling uh, drop-off uh, containers where the citizens 
will, uh, in essence, basically self-serve uh, themselves and, and sort the material and place it in the appropriate bins. Uh, those materials then would be transported to a, uh, <clears throat> to a uh, materials recovery facility where they would then be processed and, and uh, recycled or process, uh, taken care of. Then the uh, option three was to uh, close the recycling center, as we know. Uh, and then continue a partnership with Cape Harnage and Beautiful for the um, uh, the beautification projects that they have undertaken over the years. Uh, and option four was then basically a privatize, privatizing the recycling center and then having some uh, contractor coming into the city and uh, either providing a uh, curbside type recycling program or um, taking over the operation of the recycling center, the facility itself, and in essence, run the operations of the recycling center. The, uh, what I wanna uh, present to you all, in essence, is the staff's recommendation. Uh, and what I'm calling is a, uh, calling it a modified recycling operations. In essence, it's a uh, citizen recycling self uh, drop-off uh, uh, stations. We would have two. And then also enhance a partnership with Cape Harlingen and Beautiful for environmental and beautification projects. Uh, pro projects that would be funded from savings uh, realized from uh, the operating costs that would not have to be do done uh, as a result of uh, the manual processing that we're doing at this time. Again, um, I Carlos, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, on the containers, if we go with that option, is there a, a, a time, um, uh, 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 like a six month, twelve month, uh, that we're that we're, we're tied down with those with those containers? Uh, well, the uh, the containers we would purchase, and we're ready to purchase them. As a matter of fact, we've already spec them out. Uh, we have them ready to go, uh, subject <clears throat> uh, approval tonight. Uh, we have made that initial contact with the contractor, so we would own them. Uh, and then at that point, we could utilize them uh, as we please. Because uh, uh, I've been, I know I, I did mention this to Dan, and, and I, I, I had a conversation or a couple conversations with Commissioner Reese at the, at the county level, and he was interested in participating and helping uh, somehow with the cost of, uh, you know, if we go with these containers, um, uh, he necessarily can't do it uh, this month. That's obviously, it's short notice. But he also wanted to look at it as, uh, you know, contacting uh, Brownsville, the Ferry, uh, all the other surrounding cities, and see if we if we can create some kind of um, coalition with with all our cities because we're not only servicing Harnage, and I think that was mentioned before also in the presentation, uh, and and so we can uh, alleviate some of the cost. Uh, I'd like to do that, and and as far as the the um, on the key Harnage and beautiful, uh, I would I would. Uh, recommended to, to hold off on, on, on giving an amount until because uh, if we can see we have a participation from the county and it, 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 it lessens the, the cost of, of, of what we're trying to do uh, uh, then I feel more comfortable with committing to uh, whatever amount uh, we deem necessary to, to start off with, with key partners and beautiful sure so, so I, don't uh, I don't know what the other commissioners think about that uh, as far as the county participating and, mm -hmm. and, and he was working on uh, getting with the other cities and, and, and uh, I think we can get a pretty a quick response from him. Uh, um, I, 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 I definitely agree with, uh, or maybe we just do one and not two uh, because we have to have something. I mean, there, there's, there's a need for the recycling. Uh, so we have to have it put it somewhere. Uh, uh, I'm not in favor of, of, of reopening the recycling center, obviously with all this stuff going on. Uh, I think this is a very great contactless way of, 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 of providing this service and a more cost effective. Uh, but again, uh, I, those are my thoughts on, on um, trying to get uh, the people around us to participate. And, and it was very positive feedback from Commissioner Reese. Hey Richard, why don't we let uh, Carlos finish his presentation? You have a good point. Uh, you know, it, it's spot on, but why don't we let Carlos finish and that way we can have our discussion without I'm, interrupting. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought he was done. No, 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 but it's fine. You're fine. I mean, you, you, you made a good point. I, I never thought about the, 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 the county participation. So, but r rather than derail Carlos, go ahead, Carlos. All right, I'll, I'll uh, thank you. I just got a couple more slides here real quick. The, uh, the items that we would be then uh, looking at uh, collecting or recycling 
would be cardboard, uh, mixed paper, office paper, newspapers, uh, plastics, only ones and twos, those uh, plastic bottles such as uh, uh, milk jugs, water jugs, water bottles and, and to that type, and also then uh, uh, tin and aluminum. Uh, the, uh, the, the idea is, and, and again, Commissioner, uh, whatever this, this could be, or it could be established as a pilot program uh, that could be then modeled throughout the county or, or by other cities. Uh, we would have two locations, one there at the existing recycling center site and the other one at the landfill. Uh, we would, uh, at this uh, uh, repurposing, I guess you could say, is would allow us to refocus our, env our environmental education efforts to, uh, to source reduction. Uh, obviously it would uh, still uh, reduce the amount of waste that would be going to the landfill. Right now we uh, recycle or divert from the landfill approximately a thousand uh, tons. Uh, with this program, uh, we, we estimate uh, that we could still recycle anywhere between 700 to 750 tons. So uh, we're not going from a thousand to zero, we're still going to about 70, 75% that we would still be uh, recycling. Uh, again, the, 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 the component here is that uh, we would not be doing on-site recycling. We would then uh, uh, transport it off-site and then have someone else uh, recycle it. Uh, and, and again, the, uh, the funding of the, uh, for citywide beautification projects would, would be allowed through the savings incurred or realized uh, as a uh, factor of not running a, a, a full-blown recycling center on site. Uh, it would require self-monitoring. Again, uh, there is a risk for so, uh, uh, contamination, illegal dumping, if it's not properly monitored. But again, it will be inside a fenced area, so it'll be, it'll be controlled. Uh, so the, uh, the risk is, is minimal. Uh, the, uh, the facility that we are uh, looking at taking the recyclables to at this point is the City of McAllen Recycling Center. We have had initial uh, conversations with them and they are, uh, they are willing to take the materials. They have the capacity. They have introduced or told us that there's possibly uh, gonna be uh, an administration fee. And at this point it can range anywhere between two to $5 per ton. Uh, they haven't, uh, that hasn't been uh, uh, materialized. Uh, and again, the, uh, the drawback to this program is that we, the city, would not uh, generate, generate any revenues from recyclable commodities uh, under this program. Uh, again, we have uh, taken the initiative to start looking at sizing up the, the containers. We have uh, quoted uh, eight uh, uh, dumps, uh, roll-off containers. And uh, we would be ready to start as early as, as soon as they get here, uh, in essence. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the lead time on, on containers like that is anywhere from six to eight weeks. Uh, I have it. That's all I have, uh, Commissioner. Let's see if you all have any questions, I'll be willing to entertain. Carlos, that 2 to $5 fee uh, with, the, with the tonnage that you, uh, that you quoted uh, equals how much? How much money? Uh, so at uh, 750 tons, <laughs> at five dollars, that'd be 3750 dollars. Oh, okay, so that's it's not a astronomical number. That's and Carlos, based on <laughs> what I calculated, our current cost of recycling is about you know using your your average of four hundred four hundred thousand uh, dollars is about. $400 a ton, is it not? That is correct, Commissioner. And, and, and the cost of taking material to the landfill is under $30 a ton. Uh, it's, it's costing us about uh, $14 to dispose of it and another, uh, another $16 to uh, transport it per ton. Right, so, so that's about $30 a ton. Yeah. Okay, and so the... The, the administrative fee is minute in comparison, and, and at the same time, we're, 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 we've, we've got two, two things happening here. We're recycling and we're, we're not filling the landfill with stuff that can be recycled. Is that correct? I mean, we would still, 
Sorry. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Gannon's not listening to this conversation. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. We uh, we would still incur a transportation cost from from Correct. here to McAllen, uh, which is similar distance from from here to the Edinburgh landfill, maybe give or take five seven miles. <clears throat> but uh, it it's still I think it would pay. Uh, I mean, we'd, it would support a the uh, a recycling program here in, in the city. And, and see, I'm I'm, I'm with, with with Richard on this. That you know, I I've been thinking about this whole thing. Going, we we need to get more of the of the other cities that are close to us involved because you know we are taking. I mean, I looked at the list of people who 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 submitted their their request, and and not everybody's from within the city of Harlingen. I, I believe even one of the speakers tonight does not live within the city limits. And, and, and so I, I'm not trying to cut anybody out, but I think if we get the other cities to participate, uh, you know, we, we could really help McAllen. And, and, and I think an economy of scale of when they're getting good components coming in their way, uh, it helps them out. And, and, and I do understand they're gonna have to have some administrative costs. I, I don't have an issue with that. And we, and we, can, we can certainly uh, have conversation with a county about a countywide program um, I think right now what we're focused on is starting our program back up in some form. Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not interested in shutting down. I, I just think we just need to look at this from a, a, what is it really costing us to do this? And if we could get away from the 300 or $400 a ton and, and get closer to a, a, a number that we can all live with, I, I think, you know, so, so uh, I'd be interested to see what you all think about, and Dan, maybe this is for you. Uh, what do you think about ordering these? I mean, being able to order the containers immediately uh, to Mr. Liao's point so that we have a place to take the, 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 the uh, recyclables, uh, but can we hold off on, on uh, um, committing to, uh, to um, keep Harnage and Beautiful until we get an, a, a more um, idea of what, what the true cost is and, and, and and uh, the, again, the, I, I think we're going to have a short turnaround with the participation of, 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 at the county county level, and, and, and then I feel more comfortable with, with committing to some kind of number to keep our engine beautiful. But I, I think that's important. I just don't know if I want to do that right now. So, so th let me address that question. That's a very good comment, Commissioner. Um, so our recommendation is to go to the self-monitored drop-off containers, um, and then simultaneously what we're going to have what we'd like to ask you guys to allow us to do is go out for a request for proposals to see if there's any private companies out there that would be interested in in running our recycling center it's it's, it's it takes it takes a little bit of time about two months mm -hmm. but it's not going to hurt anything we can move forward with the containers while we do this explore this other option yes now the the key part of the beautiful component uh, years ago, the city council approved the resolution allocating 100% of the revenues from the recycling center to keep part of the beautiful for beautification projects. Um, and that's, that was done through a resolution. Now, over the, over, the, over the years, over time, revenues have declined because of the market condition. Of course, then you had COVID. So all of these issues kind of created a perfect storm for recycling, uh, not just here, but everywhere. And so they had, Keep On It and Beautiful hasn't been able to undertake projects uh, of, of a magnitude that we would like to see. For instance, uh, redoing the traffic islands in front of the Valley Morning Star, uh, redoing some of our gateways coming into our city. And so the thought was, if we amend that resolution through the city council action and allocate them X amount of dollars every year consistently, for specific beautification projects that are approved by the city commission through Keep Art the Beautiful. And so these are in-ground beautification projects that would be funded from some of these allocations that we had previously for the recycling center. Uh, the benefit is obvious. Uh, we see the benefit of the, the landscape project over by the interchange. We recently got another 275,000 from winning the Governor's Community Achievement Award that was done to keep part into beautiful. That money is going to go into the traffic islands over by Washington. So as we continue to do these beautification projects, and we need to, uh, we need to continue to improve our, our community. That's what we've been doing. That's what you gentlemen have been doing. Uh, I think the only way to help keep part into beautiful accomplish that goal 
is to give them a consistent amount of money every year. Uh, and and, 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 and Dan, you, you did say that, that they, they would be restricted only to the uh, materials yes. or to the... In-ground in in ground beautification well, projects. Well, let me, let me suggest, I mean, let me say this. Nick mentioned this at the, at, the, at the workshop, and I think that we need to give it some consideration. It could be uh, not just, it, it, it uh, could be materials, but it also could be for maintenance. Uh, but by that, I mean hiring a, a, an arborist or a part-time arborist. We have literally now millions of dollars worth of landscaping invested throughout our community. And right. we need to make sure that we make that investment last as long as possible. We don't want to see it deteriorate or not be taken care of the way it should be. And so some of that, some of this allocation could be dedicated to an arborist uh, or some arborist services or something like that, just to make sure that we don't, we don't, uh, you know, ruin our, uh, our investment, which, which now is literally millions of dollars uh, of great landscaping throughout the community. So it could, could include and, and that. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if, if we, and that's, I think that's important. If we did that, uh, would they be required to go out for bids and, and the whole process and then bring it to the city council? For an approval on those contracts, or uh, no, no, they, they can undertake those on their own, but their budget would have to come before city commission for approval, just like they do now. Right, and I think the, to the point that Richard's making is this is not going to go toward any, any administ. I think the big yes. thing yes. that we need to, to talk about is there'll be no administrative cost. You know, the mayor's got it right. We, we need to be able to maintain what we've got invested, but I don't think we should be spending money uh, for things that are not directly related to what they're doing and their efforts. And they do a wonderful effort. I mean, absolutely wonderful. And, and just to be clear, that resolution is not on the agenda tonight. Right. Uh, you know, th this is tied together because of the way we're discussing it. But uh, we would bring that back at a, at a future right. meeting. Okay. Uh, consideration. The staff, so the staff's recommendation tonight is uh, to move forward with purchasing the specialized containers entering in, in, into an agreement with the Mac, McAllen Murph and, uh, and putting out uh, the, uh, recycling services, uh, an RFP uh, for private. And, I, and at the same time, I think, and, and uh, we discussed, we all, we, you know, we talked about this, or I suggested at the last meeting as well, the same thing that Commissioner Uribe is, is saying tonight, and that is that, we, we need to move forward on this yes. uh, and, and try to see what sort of partnerships we can, we can develop. And it might not just be McAllen. It could be other partnerships, like you mentioned, Commissioner, mm -hmm. with, the, with the county, uh, with the Development Council. They do, uh, they've really gotten a, a, into a very robust uh, program with recycling <laughs> tires, and uh, we, need to, we need to continue that effort. We need to continue these efforts. I think in a on a more on a on a regional basis. Uh, I think McAllen will be happy to trade us the recycling center for the airport, and yeah. you know they're going to close the airport, <laughs> and and they can have recycling. No, uh, but seriously, I do I do agree with this <laughs> idea that we need to pursue it, pursue regionalism on recycling, and I and I think that we ought to talk about. For me, this is not just a financial issue. Everything we do has a fiscal <laughs> impact, and we have to look at it. And we have every every single thing we do has a cost, and we have to look at fiscal impact. But that's for me. That's not really what this is about. This is about a changing industry that we need to we need to take a pause and make sure that what we're doing is really the right things for for the environment. I mean, if you think about, I mean, if you think about the giant plastic uh, <coughs> pool that's in the Pacific Ocean, the size of Texas, that has come down ten rivers on the Pacific Rim, uh, and the fact that we've been sending plastic uh, to that part of the world for the last twenty years, and then it's getting dumped in the, we don't want to, I don't want to be part of that problem. I want to be right. part of the solution, not to be dumping plastic in the ocean. You know, go out to our airport and look at the two uh, uh, plastic sculpture, sculptures out there, recycled from 
you know, toothbrushes and combs and things that can't be recycled but have been got, uh, dumped into the ocean. So, I mean, it's a, it, it is a bigger issue. This is a first step, in my view, to, to return to recycling uh, in, a, in a smart way, in a way that's not, not going to damage the environment. And we kind of pool our resources with, with McAllen for the time being and then explore these other options. And, and, I, and, and so we can all get the cardboard uh, and plastic bottles out of our garages. Uh, and I've always, I have always separated my cardboard and my plastic. I have never put it all in one bin and let somebody else sort it for me. Uh, and I hope that that's what we can encourage. Also, one last comment I'll make before I hope that we can take some action. This month is Plastic Free Month. And, and uh, the Development Council uh, urges everybody uh, to make a commitment uh, either not to use plastic, one single-use plastic for a day, a week, or all month, or, or f for all time. And so those are the things that we need to continue uh, to be preaching and teaching uh, as well as, uh, as trying to recycle as much good, good recyclables as we can. Just one more point, Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, and, and I agree with everything you're saying. I think that's awesome. I, I think we also need to convey out to the community because we've all seen the protesters outside is that just because we're closing the current recycling center doesn't mean we're closing the process. And so I need, I think we need to convey to the community that we, we're still working on something. And so I think every, all the points that you guys have made are, are on point. And, but I, I think we need to let the public know that we're just, we're looking at a better process and not getting rid of it. I, I think you're right, Frank. And, you know, a private, right immediately after the workshop, a private contractor contacted me directly and I, I, I sent them to Dan. And as a result of them having a meeting, that's when Dan came back and says, we, we can't just do this on the first person that walks in the door. We have to put on an RFP. So my question, Dan, is how long do you think, you, you think that's going to be about a 60 day process to get the it, RFP? It, it, at least a 60 day process. And I, uh, we have to develop the request for proposals, that's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay. And then of course you have the advertisement period and then the, the ranking period. So I would say at least 60 days, maybe a little bit longer. Um, just like you, you, when you got the call, you sent it over to me. What I do with these things is I give it over to Carlos. So Carlos is gonna to have to put these things together. Okay, and so the, the real question I have- That was supposed to be funny. That was supposed to You're be welcome, funny. Carlos. <laughs> yeah. We know who does all the work in the office. <laughs> So, uh, Carlos and, and, and Dan, so um, when we put this out, it's an RFP. It's a proposal only, correct? Proposals so, only. So, if we feel as a commission, uh, you know, we're looking at this, what's right for our community. If we feel that none of them are, are, are good, we, we don't have to go with any one of them. Is that Absolutely correct? not. Absolutely not. So, what we want from the private sector is tell us what you propose to do. Okay. Either okay. run their own, run ours, yeah. how would you and do it? And, simulta and simultaneously, we can we can con we can continue these discussions with the county, and Commissioner Ruiz, as uh, Commissioner Uribe has suggested, and see uh, what what the possibilities are there uh, to partner and and do more and do more. And I completely agree with Commissioner Puente. This we somehow this is. Uh, the impression I believe in the, with the public is incorrect. This is not, we're not trying to get out of the recycling. We're, we, we've come upon a, an, you know, we're in a situation where we've had to take a pause because of the pandemic. I'll also note that Brownsville has had to reclose their recycling center because of issues related to COVID. And it may be closed, you know, indefinitely as well, but simply because of the COVID related issues. But this gives us an opportunity, I think, to do a better job with recycling, not just a more cost-effective job, but a better job for the environment. And that's what I'm looking forward to. So we uh, do so having, having, having said that, Mayor, I, I, as discussed, I, I make the motion for an approval. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah, yeah, I would just like to toss my two cents in. I think uh, a cost-effective recycling program is one of the best is one of the things that makes a, a community a little better place to live in 
and that we go ahead and do this, you know, it's a quality of life issue also. And I think we are properly addressing it. Right. Right. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right, the motion carries. Thank you for a very good discussion, everybody. All right. If I can get my iPad to come back to life, we'll get back. Here we go. Item eight, consideration of possible action to authorize staff to amend the listing of authorized properties for sale. Uh, Mayor, once again, if I may, I'm gonna uh, share the screen. Um, <clears throat> show you the uh, property that I'm referring to. Uh, can you all see it? No. Not yet. It's a beautiful fountain. There you go. All yeah. right. So on uh, November 20th of 2019, uh, you all approved the listing of 13 properties. Uh, City-owned properties are, are to be... Uh, uh, sold through a seal, seal bid uh, process. Uh, we have since then identified an additional property um, that we would like to add. And this property is located off of uh, the 300 block of uh, Polk Avenue. We're talking about this track right here that's beautifully been paved uh, by a third party. Uh, and that's the uh, Immaculate Heart of uh, Mary Catholic Church, which I believe is a property over here. Uh, according to the deeds uh, found in Cameron County, uh, the uh, city of Harlingen owns this property. Uh, yeah, and like I mentioned, this, the church has taken, uh, I guess, over in the use of the property, just like this property uh, to, the, uh, to the east. They do have ownership on this property. And so I'm not sure what happened, and I couldn't get a, a straight uh, answer from, from the church uh, in the discussions. Uh, so we uh, have advised them that we are going to present this to you all as, uh, as a recommendation to add it to the list. Uh, and uh, if approved, uh, staff will then uh, acquire a property appraisal and finalize a sealed bid package or solicitation package uh, to where the uh, church then would be, uh, uh, I guess, uh, welcome to, to uh, uh, submit a bid. Um, Cardinal said seal bid process. Does that mean if 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 it's valued at ten thousand and they offer five thousand, we have to take the five thousand? Uh, no, sir. Uh, what what uh, what happens is all bids are going to be open or would be open, and then they would come before you all the city commission for an approval uh, for the uh, for the property for the okay. tracks. Again, uh, this okay. would make it fourteen tracks, and so hopefully we get fourteen. Uh, different uh, uh, solicitations or bids, I should say. Okay. So a staff recommending minute. approval. I like the motion for mess, approval. It must be. Oh, good. I have a question. Yes, sir. So that lot is owned by the city, correct? That is correct. And somebody paved it. They did. The uh, church has paved it. Yes. When it happened, uh, again, that's another one of those things that we haven't been able to determine uh, from the uh, speaking with the uh, uh, representatives of the church in the diocese. Excuse me. <coughs> Was that during confession? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me. Okay. Is there... Is there anything further to present or ready to? Uh, no, sir. I just motion to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries to add the uh, property for sale. Item nine is consideration of possible action to approve two amendments to the Harlingen Economic Development Corporation's Harlingen Emergency Loan Program for small businesses. Rodell. Good afternoon. Um, last week, the board of the Harlingen Economic Development Corporation met and um, decided to change up the Harlingen Emergency Loan Program for small business uh, by 
actually making it a little bit more uh, open to some, some more small businesses by doing two things. One of them was to um, increase the number of employees that can be allowed as a, as a restriction, as, a, as one of the qualifications from 25 full-time equivalents to up to 50 full-time equivalents. So small businesses with at least or no more than 50 full-time equivalents are still eligible for this program, uh, which is a basically up to $10,000 interest-free loan um, with a 12-month deferral uh, on payments. Um, the other change was a change in the el eligibility requirement from uh, having to have had a injury of a 25% decrease in revenues during the shutdown versus last time, last, last year, uh, versus the same time period last year, uh, changing that from 25% to 10%. Um, so those were the two changes that the EDC decided to um, make a change on and to basically open it up for some more small businesses and if it's approved by city commission, then we'll make it effective um, immediately. And that will I think, uh, increase the application. In your packet, we have a summary of some of the stats for the applicants that have actually received the loans. I can go through it, but uh, that's totally up to y'all. I'd like to motion for an approval. Second. Any other discussion? Uh, so congratulations uh, to the EDC on the success of this program and hopefully this will expand it uh, further and more people will take advantage of it. Uh, we like we want to get the word out that uh, there's still opportunity to apply uh, for these uh, help loans from the Harlingen EDC. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item is uh, board appointments. Out of 10, are there any board appointments? I have none. None. I have one. I have uh, Enrique Del Angel for the uh, Waterworks Board. All right. Any other appointments? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the board appointment? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Item t uh, 11 is executive closed session on the following items. A, pursuant to section 551.0712, Texas Government Code, attorney consultation to receive uh, legal advice related to the city's rights, duties, privileges, and obligations in connection with the appointment of a presiding municipal court judge for the city of Arlington and related legal issues pertaining to such appointments. B, pursuant to section 551.074, Texas Government Code closed session to deliberate the appointment, employment, evaluation, and duties of qualified applicants for a position of presiding judge of the City of Arlington Municipal Court. Is is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the the commission is going to leave this Zoom meeting and attend a a uh, separate Zoom meeting in executive session with our legal counsel. Uh, there is an action item uh, that could be acted upon and the commission will return to this Zoom meeting at the conclusion of the executive session. All right, so everybody uh, uh, leave this meeting and join the other meeting. Thank you. All right, we're, so we are out of executive session at 6.49 p.m. and we're back in open session. And we're gonna go to the action item, which is number 12, consideration and appropriate action to appoint a qualified applicant to the position of presiding judge for the city of Arlington Municipal Court for a new two year term as contemplated by Section 29.005, Texas Government Code. Dan? Mayor, commissioners, uh, after conducting interviews of very qualified applicants, so we had uh, 15 applicants for the position. Uh, we were able to uh, um, conduct interviews for four of those applicants. 
Uh, again, all very qualified individuals, very impressed with the pool of applicants that we received. I am recommending to the city council that uh, we offer the position to Robert Reynaldo Garcia from Corpus Christi uh, and ask uh, that you authorize me to negotiate a salary with Mr. Garcia. Uh, and that's my recommendation to the city commission. All right, is there, a mo is, there, is, uh, is there a motion from the city commission? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept this, uh, Mr. Garcia. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept this uh, city manager's recommendation to appoint Mr. Garcia. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Opposed. All right. Motion carries, uh, and that concludes our meeting. We have no other agenda items, so we will uh, we conclude the meeting. And thank you all for being here and participating. Everybody, stay safe, healthy, wear masks, wash your hands, distance, be safe. Thank you.